While we're on the subject of layers, let's talk about alignment in layers and go into your exercise files and open up alignment and shift click on alignment two and open both of them. That'll save us a few seconds. Go to alignment, the original one first. Now what I've got is a whole bunch of circles on the screen that I've numbered one through five and they correspond to the layers over here. Let me mention something before we get started here on naming layers. To me, that's kind of an important thing. Now, I only have four, five, six, seven layers, so it's not the end of the world. But when you're working with 20 or 30 layers, layer 28 doesn't mean very much to me. If you come over and touch the name and double click on it, you can rename it. If you double click anywhere else, what it's going to do is open up the layer style options. We'll talk about those later. But yeah, name these layers. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Now, ball five is currently selected. That means if I have my move tool, and I do, I can come over here and I can begin moving it. It doesn't matter where I am because ball five resides in its own layer. So alignment in Photoshop is a little bit different than say an object oriented program such as Adobe Illustrator or even InDesign. In Adobe Illustrator, for example, all the items are objects. They can all be in the same layer and you won't have a problem. The problem with Photoshop, it's not a big deal. But what you have to remember is that in order to align anything, everything must be in its own separate layer because these are not objects. And that's what I've done. Each one of the balls is in a separate layer. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can go about this. You'll notice I have my rulers available right now. And if you don't see yours, go to the word view and go down to show rulers. Over here, if I grab and drag, I can pull out a guide. Programs have been doing this for a thousand years. If I then pick up number five and start moving it, there's a couple of defaults that are kind of nicer. When you're moving it, it'll snap there or it will even snap to center. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's kind of stopping at a snap. So I suppose if I really wanted to go old school here, what I could do is move them one at a time to the guide, but I really don't want to do that. I think that would take a lot of time. What I'm going to do is grab that guide and take it back out over here. Don't need it. So if I'm not going to do it that way, what's next? Well, we actually do have alignment options. We could do this manually still. I mean, I could move this one up here. And don't forget, I'm still moving that one until I change layers. So if I want this one, I can move it. Now, you might ask, how did I do that? There are a couple of ways that we can change to get to another layer. One would be manual. Actually, come over here, click ball number three. You can then move ball number three. And it's even trying to help me line them up this way too, even without a guide. An easier way to do that is the shortcut. If I hold down the control key and click on a layer that has something in it, it's got to have something in it, it will automatically change. And I can then move that one around to my heart's content. So that's control click. But there's a relatively new feature. Actually, it's not that new. It's been there for a couple of versions. And that's this option right up here. It's called auto select. If I turn that on, and come down here, I don't have to hold the control key down. All I got to do is click. So it becomes almost like an object. Now, I don't usually like using that one. And the reason I don't is because I'm not always wanting to move what I've got selected or under my cursor. And so I prefer the one where I use the control key. I think I've gotten used to that almost like a habit. So I know if I want to select something, I can hold the control key down. You have a choice on auto select between layer or a group. We don't have any groups over there. But in other words, do you want to select a layer outside of a group? Or when you select a layer that's in a group, do you want to select the whole group? That's the difference between the two. Here are our options for alignment. Now we have to have multiple things selected. So I'm going to select here and hold the shift key down and select here. And they come to life. These up here allow me to align top, center, to bottom, which what we're doing right now is not going to work because I want to go the other way. So I can do that all day long. It's not really going to do anything for me. What I want to do is use these. Actually, before I do, I'm going to move that one a little bit more to the right. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. OK, let's go back and select them all. Shift click. If I choose one of these over here, I can align to left, to center, or to right. But left, center, and right of what? That's why I move the number one. If I say align to right, it will look at all my layers and find the object. Actually, I shouldn't call that an object. 
it'll find a layer that has the paint in it that's to the farthest to the right, and it will align everything to that particular one. Center, it will look at, actually number two is a little bit further left than number five, and it's going to look between one and two and center based on those two. And of course, this one here will center to the left. Let's go ahead and center it toward center. These up here will then help me out in distribution. I can do a distribution left and right, but I need to go up and down. So if I select this one, say right here, it will distribute them, but based on the top one and the bottom one. The trick to remember about aligning anything in a raster program, a non-object oriented program, is that the layer itself is everything to whatever's inside of it. And if you've got everything in one layer, it's not going to work. Whereas in Adobe Illustrator, it would. And let me show you one more thing. Let's go to Alignment 2. In this one, I have four images. And each one was taken of the same barn, but different parts of the barn. I didn't have enough lens to get the whole thing all at once. This is called creating a panorama. But a lot of people don't know there's actually a button for it. What I want you to do is select all of these layers. Shift-click. This is going to be easy. This button right here, right there. Make sure you know where it is, right there. Go ahead and click it and watch what happens. We get into Auto Align, click Auto for this one, and click OK. Isn't that cool? Aligning layers is, to me, a very important part of working in Photoshop, but knowing that it's a layer and not an object is also a very important thing to understand, too. On to the next.